video three about the pig dice game. We are going to, in this one, create this GUI in Scene Builder. So we're going to have a border pane with a top, middle, bottom, left, and right, and all those pieces are going to be put in there. So what I want to do first is copy over the resources. I have pictures. And these pictures are all of 100 by 100 pixels. And these are the pictures I'm going to be using. So I've labeled them conveniently, dice 1, dice 2, dice 3, dice 0. And so let's go ahead and just copy those into our resources. Oops. I want to copy them. And so that should do it for us. Yes, copy them in there. And now in my project, I have them. So hopefully on Windows, you can similarly drag things from the Explorer window into wherever you want if you want to store some images. So now you can open them up and see them in IntelliJ as well. So here are these images. They're all 100 by 100 pixels. And the nice thing, it's a PNG, and so it has this checkerboard, but that actually means it is a invisible background. It's transparent. <clears throat> Okay, so now what we want to do is work in the GUI. Let's make a new fxml file, pig GUI. Okay, this is our empty fxml file. Doesn't really do anything right now, but let's open it up in Scene Builder. So right click. Open in Scene Builder. Poof. Here we go. So, anchor panes. I am going to get rid of that anchor pane. Delete it. I would really like it to be one of those border panes. I find them convenient. You have let locations, things move around as you want. So, let's get going. <clears throat> First, let's go find a label for the top. So, Let's put a label on the top. Now this label, I want it, you can change the text over here, you can change the text over there. It's gonna say pig game. And I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. I want to make it say size 26. You can, if you have a lot of fonts on your computer, you can pick a different font that you wanted to. You could say, well, I'm going to have it be like Baskerville font or something else, chalkboard font. Oh, no, I don't like that one. Comic Sans, never, copper plate font. So you can customize this however you want. I think right now it was called system, just system font, and we're all good there. Okay, so next thing I want, I'm gonna have an image in the middle. So over here I have an image view, and I'm going to drop that right in the center. So this image right now, we know that all our images are going to be 100 by 100, and so I'm going to make this 100 by 100 right here. Now, the other thing I like to do is make things have margins, make things have padding. So. Let's go back out to my border pane. I'd really like everything to have a nice padding of 10. It gives us space around the edge. If we click back on that, we will have this 10 pixels between our text and the edge. I think that looks really nice. So the middle here, the image view, uh, I, I, I don't want it to be really this big but I do want it to have some stuff around it. We're, we're gonna resize this at the end to compress it down, but for right now, that's pretty good. So at the bottom, I want to have my buttons. So since I want more than one button, I need to go back to, to my container, make an H box, and inside that H box is where I can put my two buttons. Oh, down here in my Button one, button two. Okay, so roll and hold. 
Now, note this H box is pretty big. I would like it to be resized here. I don't want to use the 200 by 100. Let's actually compress things a bit, use the computed value, and use the computed size. But those buttons are over there on the left. I would like those buttons to be sort of stretched across everything. And so my width, I'm going to say, is the max value. And the next thing I'm going to do here, I am going to pick these and also have them make the max value. And by doing so, I have to change how they grow, each grow up here. Does the different way to figure out if things are big or not, should I grow? Well, it says, look to my parent. I always want to grow. But well, what do I do here? I always want to grow. And if they both grow as big as possible, then they're going to stretch across the bottom of the screen. <clears throat> okay, so I've got an image. I have my label on the top. And I have my two buttons at the bottom. Now I need to work on the player windows. If you notice here, I have a window over here and a window over there. They're pretty identical, so I'm going to make one and then copy it over and change a few things. So, on the left hand side, I am going to have a vertical box. Z box comes down here for the left hand side. Notice how it stretches for the whole thing. Well, I definitely want to have a label. So let's go make a label here on the top of that V box. And this is going to say player one. And then underneath it, I would like to have this label and input box, label and text entry. The organizer doesn't make those line up really nicely. I like to use a grid view. So um, here's my grid pane. And my grid pane is going to go underneath right there. I don't need it that big, so I can select one of those rows and delete it. I just want it to be two by two. So now I can go into each of those spots and drag in a label and a label. And then I can drag in a text field and a text field. Okay. So it would be nice to have some padding here as well. So, and I want it to go everywhere. So I use that other arrow here to spread it out across everything. So now I have a padding. I can also have some spacing if I want to. So this says in between things that are inside the V box, how far apart are they? That's good. How big do I want it to be? Well, this should just be the computed size. So however big it should be is how big I can make it. Now, this up here, I would like this to be centered. So let me see how I can get it to be centered. Properties alignment, center left. If I say center, And under layout, I say always, no, inherit, oh, here we go, max value. Then it displays it all the way across and it's centered right there on the pieces it needs. So let's change this to turn and total score. There we go. Each of these text fields. I want them both to be not editable. The player shouldn't be able to go in and type things in those boxes. The game is responsible for filling that in. So that gives me my piece on the left. So what I'd like to do now is to copy. And then here on the right, uh, where can you go? 
I want to, how do I paste it in there because it doesn't exist yet. Ah, well, we'll paste it somewhere and say, no, I didn't really want it there. I wanted it over here. Good, that solved it. Okay, player one's over here and player, oh, player one's over there. No, player two is over there. Okay, and now they're gonna have their spots. We can go back now, because I've filled it all in, I want this to not be as big as 600, 400. I would like this to use the computed size. So make it as big as you can to fit everything in there is pretty much what that's saying. So this VBox, this grid pane, labels and the text fields, these are all going to be those different pieces, and we will have a die roll right there in the middle. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's see, I think that takes care of everything we need. We should have our die rolling in the middle. We've got our fields, entries, places to click roll, places to click hold, Notice it's going to be a little tight here if we look at where the die is going to be rolled. So on that box here at the bottom, I am going to add a little bit of margin on the top. Now you can see a little bit of separation there between what's happening. I should do that on the, the top of this one as well. Separate it out just a bit from that G hanging down from pig, and it will be separated over here, separated over there a little bit, and we should be all set. Okay, so I save that. We can go back over here, and we see all of that crazy FXML code, which we never really need to look at. Okay, next thing we want to do is to make a class, which is gonna be our pig app. Now, what I always do is go back to the lab, find the spot where it says, here's the application. This is the copy and paste. Copy and paste this. Oh, pig app. Great, what was the name? Pig GUI. And if we do that, then we should be able to run our program here from JavaFX inside IntelliJ. And here's the GUI that we just created together. Okay, and that looks pretty close to the GUI that I'd made before. That'll work. So we are going to get going with this one and start wiring things up for the controller in the next video.